Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're going to be talking about the various machine shop spaces on board the ship and uh, some of the things that they could do to repair while underway. So we are currently on second deck, pretty far back on the ship. We're at frame 134, if you're following on your booklet of general plans from home. And uh, this hatch in the deck here leads up from Broadway. As you've probably seen in many of our other videos, Broadway has a big yellow rail going all the way down the center. Primary reason for that rail is to pass ammunition from the after magazines forward or the forward magazines aft, depending on where stuff is being loaded. Uh, however, because it's got a two ton capacity, you can also use it to move uh, major engineering components or anything else heavy that you need moved uh, and it'll take you basically to the base of this hatch where we've got a two-ton chain fall that can lift it up. So if you've got some engineering equipment that needs to be fixed, you can pull it up out of the engine room, slide it down the rail, and get it up here to this rail, which goes through the machine shop spaces. A common question that we get is how do you swap out major pieces of equipment? Um, and the simple answer is you don't not uh, in their entirety at least. So things like the ship service turbo generators, boilers, turbines, and reduction gearboxes um, are by and large original when the ship was built and they were installed prior to this six inch thick deck being installed on top. Now, this hatch is among the largest that goes into the armored citadel. So anything that we are removing from there has to fit through this hatch. Uh, most of the equipment down there can be broken down into much smaller sub-assemblies that can be moved around and replaced. You can take a single gear out of the gear reduction box or uh, stuff out of the boilers, etc. So you can fix if individual parts break. If the whole thing gets damaged, uh, that is much harder to fix. This is also one of the issues that these ships would run into if you wanted to, say, swap out the old boilers with uh, boilers and engines with gas turbines or nuclear power. I, you just can't change out the entire major assembly like that. You can do a lot with repairing these ships, but huge swaps like that are pretty prohibitive. So the first in our suite of machine shop spaces is this room right here. Notice the HT, hall technician. That was the rating that would work in here. And this space is uh, where a lot of the welding and that sort of metal working would be carried out. And like most of the other machine shop spaces I'll show you today, our staff and volunteers still use this space Notice the rail and the overhead going through the door into more of the machine shop spaces. Before we move on to the other spaces through that door, let me show you where they stored some of the spare metal and other stock that they used. This is the uptake where exhaust gases from boilers number seven and eight in engine room number four would vent up to trunk into the after smokestack. It would be pretty hot in here in service. It's not a habitable space, but it does make a great storage space. Notice how these boilers curve as they come out so that a bomb going down the funnel can't just go straight down. It jinks off to the side so that you've got a six inch armored deck directly beneath that. The bomb isn't going to make right angle turns. But here you can see a stack of a bunch of our stock uh, and spare parts and things. The white pipe behind me is part of our modern day heating and air conditioning system that was added. So that would not have been here in service and there would have probably been more stock stored down there. 
Next on our list of places to explore is the power shop. How do we know it's the power shop? We let the ship speak to us. Iowa-class battleships have around a thousand motors on board. Uh, by the 1980s and early 90s, these were known to fail. So, rather than replacing the whole motor underway, you can rewind the motor so that you can reinstall it. The power shop has burnout ovens, so you can burn out all the old windings in your motor. Uh, and then it's got machines that allow you to rewind, uh, a vat to varnish them, and a bake oven to finish out the process. So here's some motor components in various stages of rewinding. We don't currently have anybody on staff who can use this equipment. So this part of the machine shop is on the regular tour route and not still in use. With the exception of the feed blaster, which probably wasn't here originally, but we have set up uh, to use when polishing metal. From the power shop, we come here into the machine shop proper. And this is where um, machinery repairmen would work on any metalworking that needed to be done on the ship. This equipment probably dates back to the early 40s uh, and given the lack of overhead hatches, I assume had to be installed prior to the ship uh, being completed, prior to the inch and a half thick bomb deck being installed overhead uh, at some point in late 41, early 42. So this equipment has been down here and used since World War II and it still works to this day. Uh, major pieces you see are lathe, a drill press, and a turret lathe. Continuing around, we have more equipment in the passageway and another slightly smaller armored hatch and chain fall to bring equipment up. We also have another uptake, this case uptake number three, with boilers five and six feeding through it into the aft stack, uh, and more stock. In addition to the stock, which the Navy just left in place when they decommissioned the ship and we still draw from today, there are also some spare parts here uh, and other things that we have stripped off of other Navy vessels for the restoration of this vessel. Some of the Iowas also store large tools in this space. Uh, I know on Missouri, this is roughly where their propeller nut wrench would be stored. I don't know where New Jersey's would be stored if we even carried one. Uh, another common question we get is if you're replacing large engineering equipment, why not just drop them down the smokestack or cut the smokestacks off and then drop them through the hole left there in the deck? They are, after all, uh, basically sheet metal compared to the rest of the ship that's armored. Well, again, the smokestack isn't one big hole going down through the ship. Each boiler has its own downdraft and uptake. So that's multiple smaller holes. And like we talked about in the last one, these uptakes curve, so they're not a straight path down. So you can't just lower a major piece of equipment down the smokestack. Uh, and, and not only are they curved, but they're armored too. There are armored uptakes in there, approximately where the armored decks are. So they are not less armored than the rest of the ship. So here we are at the door 
to uptake number three where we just were. And you'll notice it's got a ladder next to it. A ladder that goes nowhere. Uh, there isn't even a mark in the overhead where there used to be something welded here. Why do we need a ladder and a handhold here? Well, how do we get that big stock out of the uptake? Notice there's a pad eye mounted in the bulkhead that we can put another chain fall to. So this ladder just exists to access that. You'll notice there's one on the other side of the door as well. Now we're in another part of the machine shop where you could do work on smaller pieces. So we've got a number of other uh, primarily lathes in here that, that are much, much smaller. Again, these all seem to be the same vintage and probably date back to World War II. The final set of spaces associated with the machine shop is the office here. Notice there's more storage back there. And check out this feature. It looks like the crew uh, in the various commissions during the 1980s cut their names into the six inch armored deck here. Are you one of the machinists who cut your name in the deck here? Let us know in the comments section down below. If you guys have any questions or comments, drop them in the comments down below. We do our best to get back to you as quick as possible, although that has become much more difficult uh, now that there's so much more commenting going on. So if we don't get back to you within an hour, we'll get to it at some point, I swear. Um, also remember to like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when we put out new content. We try to put out multiple videos per week. Uh, and the battleship receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State. And also from viewers like you, if you would like to support the museum and our YouTube channel, there's a link in the description below to our uh, GoFundMe campaign. And any money you donate into there goes directly into the museum and what we do here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.